When you think of window managers, you're probably thinking of something you've seen on Unix porn. Super pretty, highly customized window managers that just look awesome. But what exactly are window managers? If you're viewing this video, chances are you have a web browser open or even a smartphone application on. Each window or application is solely responsible for displaying its content. There then must be a component that organizes all the windows and puts them in one place, your screen, and that is precisely what a window manager does. Now, before we get too far, I do have to thank the channel sponsor Linode for helping me make videos like this possible. Linode, or soon to be Akamai Cloud Computing, is a platform for developers that allows you to spin up a variety of Linux servers in the cloud. You'd either start with a bare bones Linux distribution or use one of their many one-click installers to get services, applications, or really whatever you need spun up with ease. If you use the link down below, you'll get a $100 60-day credit. Go ahead and try out Linode today. Every operating system has a window manager, sometimes more than one. Most commercial desktops actually try to hide this component, as it should be an implementation detail. As a as a result, most window managers go without name or recognition. And of course, in the Linux ecosystem, there's a much different approach to this. As many desktops have their own recognizable window managers such as GNOME, KDE Plasma, or XFCE, Mutter, KWIN, and XFWM, respectively. These are quite different from each other with a bunch of different features. As an example, KDE KWIN supports the concept of activities to organize the applications in different spaces entirely, or Mutter has touchpad gestures to quickly switch them between virtual desktops in their overview. And of course, developers can choose to write their own window managers in replacement for existing ones. KFT developed by Roman Gilg is a replacement for KWIN that brings its own improvements to Wayland. The opposite can be done as well using a actual window manager provided by the desktop environment like KWIN, but without actually using KDE Plasma at all. In fact, window managers can be wildly different in how they behave. Behave. If you use the phone, you know that the window manager there will always maximize windows as an example, whereas on most desktops, you have windows that you can move around and resize freely, thus the name floating window manager. Both Mutter and Kwind are of this kind, but it's not the only kind at all. Another very common idea is that of tiling window managers, which you might have experienced if you used iOS or Android on a tablet through the split screen functionality, as it allows you to see multiple apps but making one bigger will automatically make the other one smaller. The same idea on desktop follows, but it is much more powerful. The basic concept is still that if a tiled window covers your entire screen, you resize them, all the other windows will resize accordingly, making space for the one you're resizing, something you might otherwise do by hand. And by the way, some of the floating window managers such as KWIN or even on Windows, do offer the same functionality of auto resizing, but it's really not nearly as powerful. But on the desktop, there are more advanced tiling features like automatically setting the position and size of windows when you open them. In KDE KWIN, as an example, they're always gonna open on the same spot, same size where you closed them, which is not the right place most of the time. And this is where patterns come in for tiling window managers. They describe where you'd like a window to appear. One possible pattern, as an example, is to always have the left window that covers half the screen and split the right part of the monitor in equal parts for all remaining windows. But there are others that privilege more quarter tiling or that take inspiration from the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, floating and tiling window managers are kind of the main concepts here. This does not stop developers from trying to uh, innovate and improve on these ideas. To make an example, there are two projects called Cardboard and Endless Window Manager claiming to be scrolling window managers. The idea is that instead of displaying all your windows on the available screen space, either tiling them or through floating dialogues, all of your windows are displayed in a continuous horizontally scrollable workspace. All windows for the height of the monitor and you can replace their width and change their order, but that's really it. If you use something like GNOME and you like this idea, there's Paper WM implementing the same concept on top of the GNOME shell. It allows you to create multiple workspaces and switch between them, but the fundamental idea of having a single scrollable view with all your windows is preserved. Both scrollable and tiling window managers have one thing in common, though the emphasis of using your entire available screen space without allowing any overlap. From this point of view, they are quite similar and can even be considered in the same category. It's easy to see why this idea would be appealing, even though floating window managers are the ones that are most commonly used. Avoiding any kind of overlaps, make sure that there are no relevant information is hidden, 
or hard to find, but it's either immediately available on the screen or you have to move your view either by scrolling or changing your workspace to see it. And not wasting any screen space is important on both like small laptop displays where there's very few space or even on large monitors where it's just easy to waste space. Even only considering the most common type of window managers, the floating and tiling, there are completely different sets of features depending on which one you're going to end up using. Some are rather technical like the implementation of fractional scaling, but some are more user facing. A quite unique feature offered by both KWIN and XWM for example is shading or rolling windows. This is an alternative to minimizing windows that hides the window content and leaves the title bar floating around. Some window managers of course are going to be more customizable than others. Here though I do have to introduce the difference between CSD or client side decorations and server-side decorations or SSD. Some applications, like most GNOME applications, will draw their entire window including the title bar and shadows. In this case, the job of the window manager is to only draw that on the screen. These are client-side decoration apps, as in the decoration, title bars and such, is drawn by the client or the window itself. Some other windows, like KDE applications, only draw the inner content of that window, leaving the look, the title bar, the outline, the shadow all up to the window manager. These are the server side decorations, as in the decoration that is drawn by the server or the window manager. Thus, a big difference between window managers is how they actually draw these decorations. KWIN, for example, allows you to install third-party themes written in either C++, QML, or SVG files to completely customize their look. Even keeping the default theme, you can fine-tune some settings just to get it exactly how you want it. For example, the actual strength and color of the shadows under your windows. Mutter has the opposite approach. It does not allow any decoration and always puts the responsibility of drawing the decoration on the application itself. Note that clients or windows are gonna be required by desktop specifications to always be able to draw the decoration. And it's up to the window manager to offer integrations with SSD applications. Given how many variations and different types and customization options of window managers there are, chances are you're gonna to want to be able to play around and switch in between some of them without completely reinstalling your operating system. Usually this component is extremely close to the rest of your desktop environment and it might be impossible to change it. However, that is not always the case. Interestingly though, the window manager sometimes sees the actual desktop, such as your wallpaper, files, the home screen and your panels as a normal window that's as big as your screen. Meaning that if you close that window, everything else should technically work. In fact, if you log into KDE Plasma and immediately kill Plasma, you'll see that all of the windows will still work and you're still able to switch in between virtual desktops. This is because KWIN is still running. It's capable to run even without the desktop at all, though this is not really recommended. Obviously though, some developers have created window managers that do not require a desktop at all, such as i3. Starting something from scratch that you can then use in any Linux based desktop has allowed to bring some significant innovations as well. Floating window managers today have roughly behaved the same way for years. And there are significant differences in how the idea is implemented, but the general concept really has not changed over time. Instead, tiling window managers allow for quite some interesting innovation and experimental concepts. Let's see a few starting with ION3-NotionWM. Using that, you're able to embed the workspace inside another as if it is a normal window, basically allowing you to make groups of windows and treat that group like a window itself. And then there's i3 with the concept of scratch pads. It behaves like a workspace, meaning that you can move windows inside of it, but it's invisible by itself. And the windows inside of it are floating. This means you can put some useful tools in there and show and hide the scratch pad when needed. The awesome window manager throws away workspaces entirely in replacement of tags. You can set tags for each window and then ask awesome to only show the windows for a certain tag. This as an example allows you to show two tags at the same time and then only change one of the two. Now I've mentioned that you can use these window managers on any Linux based operating system. So you then might be tempted to use those instead of the ones offered by your desktop environment, such as throwing away KWIN and installing Awesome. Can you do that? Kind of. Main desktops, Plasma, and GNOME do support it natively or with external projects. K1 
KDE offers a tutorial on how to use Plasma without other window managers. This means one, you get to keep the rest of your desktop customization that you already like the panel, the app launcher, the search bar, etc. And two, services such as the notification system are still managed by the desktop without you having to install third party programs. In Gnome land, there's a project called i3 Gnome. That does this very thing, and on the Y section of the page, the application is pretty clear. Useful for people that are getting started with the i3 window manager, but do not want to uninstall their current desktop environment. That being said, you can also kindly ask a floating window manager to behave more like a tiling window manager. There are various ways to do this depending on your desktop environment. Probably one of the very best implementations of this is the pop shell. Within Pop OS, which offers tiling out of the box, there's a tiling menu on the top of the screen where you can just turn it on, see some shortcuts and set gaps in between your windows, and just like that, you're done, your windows will start tiling. KDE's KWIN does support tiling thanks to a variety of third-party scripts that you can find by going to System Settings, KWIN Scripts, Get New Scripts, Although they are third-party scripts, this doesn't make them any less well-integrated than a first-party solution. If you are running KDE Plasma, I've actually covered some of these scripts in the past, so do make sure you check out that video. There's also a native solution if you just press the Windows key or the Meta key and T, but this is not as like full tiling as other implementations. Finally, you can also find the GNOME tiling extensions such as Tiling Assistant, so turning on tiling there is just as easy as installing an extension. Now, of course, you can change your window manager and then in the process end up ditching your desktop environment entirely. This is actually a pretty common choice between those people who prefer using tiling window managers, which generally means out of the box you're going to get no panel, no notifications, no default applications, and so on. You'll have to go on and install various projects that implements those components and customize them to your need. And when I say customize, I don't mean going into a settings application and toggling some options off and on, as there usually is not one. Rather, tiling window managers usually go with text configuration files, which in turn makes them relatively easy to add scripts to. Some other tiling window managers like DWM will even directly ask you to edit the source code to change certain behaviors if necessary. Take Awesome for example. Again, you basically edit Lua scripts that will determine how tiling will look. All these aspects might easily scare new users away, but to be fully honest, most full tiling window managers aren't really meant for the new users anyways. But those with a bit more of a developer background are those who just really love tinkering with their systems. These people can make complete customization possibilities to make sure that their workflow fits best for them. Of course, this is just the window manager, then there are a bunch of other things you're going to need to set up. As an example, a common project is Polybar, which allows you the creation of a status bar or a panel. You can set it up as you please, setting exactly what services to show, such as system tray, virtual desktops, the window titles, and so on. Another necessary component is the notification daemon, which will receive and show notifications of all your application. We could use Dunst as an example, which is incredibly lightweight, giving you the full advantages and features of notifications. You can fully customize how Polybar and Dunst look, which can result in some wild personal setups through .config files and then share these dot .files with other users to make them be able to replicate your exact setup. For example, DistroTube has a, a DTOS project, which is basically just his dot .files with his preferred window manager and customizations. The great thing about having this level of modularity is that you're able to use Polybar or any other component regardless of the window manager that you decide to use. You can even go ahead and write your own window manager if your skill set allows you to, while preserving the rest of your setup. Overall, it's just a matter of personal preference. You can play around with, use whatever the hell you want, have fun, that's the whole point. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you do kind of want to play around with tiling, I do recommend you use an extension or a KWIN script just to kind of get the feel and the idea before you go ahead and install a full board tiling window manager. Again, I'll leave links down below to some KWIN scripts, a the GNOME tiling extension pop shell, whatever you want to use for whatever environment you happen to be in to go ahead and play around with those features. And with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do make sure you subscribe. And while you are down there checking out the links, there's going to be a link to our newsletter. We send out weekly news covering technology, open source, things like that. And it's written by the same person who wrote this video script, Nicolo. So big thank you 
for that. And yeah, hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.